जाने आलम खा के टीवी देखने वाले नाजरीन को आज के इस एपिसोड में वेलकम है और आप सब नाजरीन को मैं दावत देता हूं आज के सेशन में हमारे एक मेहमान के साथ शरीक होने के लिए जो आज मैंने स्पेशली दावत दी है जिनको ताकि वो अपने आइडियाज हमारे नाजरीन के साथ शेयर कर सकें और ये साहब हैं जनाब मंसूर नूरानी साहब ये जो है एक बहुत ही सक्सेसफुल प्रोफेशनल इनका एरिया ऑफ फोकस रिसर्च है और ये हेल्थ साइंसेज में रिसर्च को डील करते हैं और एक सक्सेसफुल पेरेंट भी हैं इनके माशाल्लाह दो बच्चे हैं और साथ ही साथ वो सोशल वर्क भी करते हैं रिलीजियस एजु और कल्चरल एजुकेशन की सूरत में तो मैं इनको का एक मुख्तर जिक्र कर रहा हूं और ये डिटेल में आपको ये अपने बारे में कुछ बताएंगे और इनको मैंने इसलिए दावत दी है आप जानते हैं कि इस टीवी का मकसद जो है आज नाम खाके टीवी का मकसद यही है कि हम लाइफ एज इट एग्जिस्ट और एज वी एक्सपीरियंस इट उसके बारे में हम गुफ्तु करना चाहते हैं तो मैं हमेशा जो है वो जो अमूमन एटीट्यूड होता है एलिट्स को बुला के इंटरव्यू करने का उससे हटकर मैं कर रहा हूँ कि जो आम जिंदगी में लोग सक्सेसफुल हैं आम जिंदगी गुजारते हैं जो प्रॉब्लम्स फेस करते हैं चैलेंजेस फेस करते हैं और इसी में ही जिंदगी गुजारते हैं मैं उनको दावत देना चाहता हूँ ताकि उनकी जिंदगी से हम भी सीख सकें तो आज इस लिहाज से मैंने जनाब मंसूर साहब को दावत दी है मंसूर नूरानी साहब आपको मैं आज जाने आलम खा के टीवी में वेलकम करता हूं मुझे उम्मीद है कि हमारे ऑडियंस हमारा ऑडियंस जो है हमारे इस डिस्कशन को एंजॉय करेंगे तो मंसूर साहिब मैं पहला सवाल आपसे ये करना चाहता हूं कि आप अपने जिंदगी के बारे में इन नट हमारे ऑडियंस को आप जैसे नौजवानों को और लोगों को क्या बताना चाहेंगे अपने बारे में आई एम जस्ट एन एवरेज पर्सन कॉमन पर्सन हु लाइक्स टू रीड बुक्स वाचिंग स्पोर्ट्स वर्किंग आउट एंड स्पेंडिंग टाइम विद माय फैमिली स्पेशली विद माय वाइफ शी इज माय बेस्ट फ्रेंड ओह आई सी अब बताएंगे बेस्ट फ्रेंड कैसे आप देखते हैं बिकॉज़ वी टॉक अबाउट ईच एवरीथिंग हम एक दूसरे को समझते हैं वो मुझे समझती है मैं उसको समझता हूँ और हम बाईस साल से मैरिड है और इट्स लाइक इट्स इट्स बिकमिंग लाइक अ फ्रेंड यू कैन नॉट लिव विदाउट यू नो आई मीन यू सो लीन ऑन ईच अदर हाँ माशा बाईस साल बोल बाईस साल बाईस साल शादी को दो बच्चे हैं आपके माशा अच्छा तो ये आपके ख्याल में ये सीक्रेट क्या है कि जो आप इतने अंडरस्टैंडिंग है आई लव दैट वर्ड इतना अंडरस्टैंडिंग हारमनी है इसका की क्या है एक दूसरे के खुशामद बहुत करते हैं या एक दूसरे के लिए डिमांड्स नहीं करते हैं क्या ऐसी बात है हम लोग तो बहुत मुश्किल महसूस करते हैं भाई सीक्रेट तो कुछ नहीं है बस यही कि मैंने हमेशा एक दूसरे को दूसरे को इक्वल समझा है कभी ऐसा नहीं समझा कि वो बड़ी है या मैं बड़ा हूँ इक्वल पार्टनर हम जो भी लाइफ में डिसीजन लेते हैं एक दूसरे से कंसल्ट करते हैं ज्यादातर वो अच्छा डिसीजन लेती है आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ द डिसीजन वो ज्यादा अच्छा लिए और उसने उससे मैंने बहुत कुछ सीखा है तो शी इज द बेस्ट तो अच्छा तो ये आप एक राज तो ये मैं जो मैं जो समझा हूं वो पार्टिसिपेटरी डिसीजन मेकिंग राइट के वन साइडेड कि मैं मर्द हूं और ये मेरा काम है डिसीजन लेना ये नहीं होता या औरत है कि वो उनका काम है वो डिसीजन लेती है तो ऐसा नहीं है बाय द वे इनके वाइफ भी हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशन से ताल्लुक रखती हैं तो ये समझना बैकग्राउंड जरूरी है तो आपके अंदर जब डिसीजंस करने होते हैं या कोई डिसीजन लेते हैं तो क्विकली एक दूसरे को कॉन्फिडेंस में लेते हैं मिलकर फैमिली डिसीजंस लेते हैं नाजरीन कराम यहाँ ही आपको एक अच्छा पैगाम मिला कि अच्छे कपल्स जो एक दूसरे को बहुत करीब से जानते हैं देखते हैं अप्रिशिएट करते हैं वो एक दो साल के लिए बाईस साल हो चुके हैं 
इतने कदर से देखते हैं तो उसमें एक की एलिमेंट जो है वो ये है कि जब डिसीशन लेते हैं जिंदगी के बारे में छोटे बड़े तो एक दूसरे के साथ मिल कर लेते हैं बहुत पावरफुल पॉइंट है मंसूर साहब थैंक यू वेरी मच हमारे ऑडियंस के साथ आपने ये शेयर किया आप ये बताएंगे कि एज ए यूथ इस मुल्क के अंदर रहकर यूथ के चैलेंजेस को कैसे देखते हैं आप जैसे उम्र के लोगों के लिए क्या चैलेंजेस हैं लाइफ में चैलेंजेस स्पेशली यूथ के लिए मेरे बच्चों को भी मैं देखता हूँ लुक एट दैम uh the main challenge is that we grew up in a different society and they are growing up in a different society right okay. so this is a very free society where you know uh children uh, you know have so many rights and children you know has so many opportunities so many ways to do things so it's not i think so they can change but as a parent we need to adapt uh to this society and then you know raise them uh according to the society here right we cannot use the same techniques and same methods we used to use do our parents used to do in pakistan or you know back home um, so it's 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 a very different society children grew up in a different way different culture so the main challenge uh, i think so in terms of is to in terms of religion and faith is to make them teach in a way that they feel like that that faith is part of their daily lives and that relevancy with the faith in a daily life is very a challenge yes uh, i think to a great extent uh, mansoor i would agree with you the point you are making is that uh, because our parents had certain assumptions how right. to bring up their children you know in a perfect way right. and that was do or die but don't say why Yeah, yeah. That was the yeah, there was there was kids, right? Yeah, it was more command based. Right here is more yes. reason based society, right? So, if children does something and if we tell them, okay, don't do it, the next question would be, why not? Why not? Right. So, uh, so then you have to explain them instead of saying, I say so, which my dad used to say or my parents used to say, I say so. It doesn't work here, right? They always gonna inquire and they say, okay, why not? Why can't I do that? Why should I do this? right and then you have to have that discussion with them uh an intellectual discussion okay you know if certain things that we not uh, suggesting you should do uh that's the reason that's the way we think but then at the end of the day they have to make the choice mm-hmm. of their own uh, right which, which this society allows them to do that and which is good uh, which is in a way good because they're going to learn from their experience okay now i ask a critical question yeah. is it a good thing or a bad thing for me is a good thing uh because uh you cannot teach i think so we, we were discussing downstairs that we cannot teach anything by fear right by force or by imposing things right so i think so it's good discussion based uh you know talking explaining things uh sometimes you agree sometimes you don't agree it's a good thing because it raises your kids in a way that they will make their decisions in a very critical way a very intellectual way but if you if you make them uh treat them or you know raise them by you know forcing or imposing they're going to find other ways to do things which may not be good uh and you won't find out well said yeah well said you remind me of the scholar abdullah sachid he has written a book on pluralism you know he makes a, an extremely important statement that i want to share with the audience and you as well uh, and i think we need to keep that uh, at the back of our mind when we develop children he says that whenever you you coerce anybody and that includes children as well when you coerce force them to do certain things hypocrisy is born is there hypocrisy is encouraged because children will become hypocritical in order to please the parents they will do certain things but when the parents are no longer there they will do whatever they like so anything is forced on human beings who are characterized by reason and rationality it cannot work in certain societies work again as you said because of the fear 
But when in uh, societies where rational thinking, reason is encouraged, forcing uh, anybody, whether it is your children or um, employees or somebody else, is not going to work. You are developing a hypocritic society. And I, for one, believe that in many societies, this is the malice of those kinds of societies where they feel proud that here through law, through hooliganism, through certain social pressures, they create an environment where everybody has to conform to a particular way. Right? And they think this is our perfect society. You know? uh, so it's a value-based society and therefore it is a perfect society. I, for one, I, I see many people when they leave those societies, they become totally different. Yeah. They, in fact, oppose all those values that they were trust on them. Whether you take examples of, of people from Africa or Asia, in many parts of the Western world, when they come here, they feel free. They do whatever they want to do. And they keep on uh, speaking against those kinds of coercive values. And therefore, coercion should not work for our children. Yeah, and in short, is that, is that the children or your children should respect you, but they should not fear you. Yes. And that's that's the thing. And that's I, the I, learned, I, learned, I learned it uh, as, the, uh, as I came here and, and I learned all those things, you know, as I see in the society, that, you know, how to raise kids in, the, in this way where they come and talk to you, respect you, but that you should not fear you. Excellent. You have been teaching uh, certain kids also the cultural and uh, religious education uh, also. What do you think uh, at their face is the greatest challenge the, 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 the youngsters in this society? As a teacher, how did you feel? Uh, the, as, as I said, that the biggest challenge is always is that how to make teaching in a way that where I can make them understand that how faith is relevant in their daily lives. Mm -hmm. uh, it took, to have that discussion because the, the kids here, uh, they ask a lot of questions uh, uh, and they ask questions which are not goes with the norm of, you know, of our faith culture, sometimes, okay. our no faith or our culture or society, and it goes against it sometimes. And we are, and we are very fearful sometimes to answer <laughs> those questions. Uh, yes. But the thing is, uh, the biggest challenge is that as a, you know, I always remember this line from Hazim Mark and it just it stuck to my mind that, you know, religion should be spontaneous to you. Uh -huh. And yes. I always thought, what does he mean, right? right? Why he wants, what, what is spontaneity means? You know, it should come natural, right, to you. From within. From, from within. And that's the biggest challenge, especially here in this society, uh, where there are so many options out there, so many things kids can do. They have so many ways to spend their time anywhere, uh, a lot of other places. And within all those options, how can you make this option of religion and faith interesting for them? Right? Yes. And that's the biggest challenge as a teacher. I always find, um, but that's always going to be a challenge at this. Yes, you are, you are putting your finger on a very pressing issue. You know, I ask myself, there have been societies in the past, even currently there are societies where religion is not always taught institutionally. Yeah. In a madrasa, or in a convent or in other places. But do they not become at all any religious than those who are studying in religious institutions? I must share this uh, Mansoor, uh, an intellectual scholar, you know, a thinker, a guru uh, in modern times says that, you know, very often, is it possible that parents, caregivers, teachers, actually diminish the internal spiritual thirst. And that's why people do not always become naturally, religiously sensitive because too much pressure on them. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that religion cannot be forced, cannot be pressured. Uh, it has to come within. Uh, but all you can do is nurture it, right? Uh, all right. you can do is nurture it. 
uh, through examples, through being a role model, through being other stuff. But at the end, is the up to the up to the youth to uh, to have that spark in them. Uh, I don't know how that spark is going to come, uh, and it sometimes it happens late in your life, um, you know, lifetime. Yes. Sometimes it happens when you you when you feel yes. uh, when you face some adversity in your life. Yes. Uh, when you when something uh, happens in your life and change, things changes in your life. Become when you become more friend because when when I was single I was like that too I I never cared about religion that much because <laughs> you know, I didn't have any responsibility right but as I have family and I have kids then I became more mature and I became more uh, faith based uh, has more conscious. faith conscious okay. faith conscious uh, because you know you you start thinking okay you know nothing if that anything in life if something happens you're always going to have a God on your side yes. right to give you strength of course uh, things going to happen. It's not going to go down. You 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 always feel adversity, but I think so. But that faith gives you that strength to yes. face those adversities. Yes. yes. So I think so. These kids, I'm not I'm not this I'm not like discouraged. I think so. They will find way of yes, because they 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 practice their faith differently than us. Yeah, they practice their faith. The word is very yeah. The practice of faith. You know, I mean, going to Jamaat Khan, going to Masjid, and all those places is good and it's very important. But I, I think so. Uh, it's faith is more than that. Yeah, faith absolutely. is more than rituals. Yes, yes. Uh, practicing ritual, I think, is more uh, belief system, faith, yes. and it has to be come from inside. So I think so. They will, they will find their way. All we can do as a as a parent, as a teacher, as a guide, is to be there, support them, help them, and uh, nurture them, and see what happens. The discussion before we came here, uh, Mansoor, is very very important. That to me was a very strong message and many of the parents you know here today as well as at other times they keep on telling me that very often children uh, warn the parents not to say certain things for example not to be prejudicial not to be biased towards other people and what have you in this as i personally believe that Probably our children are in many ways more religious, yeah. ethically sensitive, sensitive yeah. than we are. Than we are, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And therefore, uh, to say that they are always not religious and therefore we are trying to impose everything on them as religion, as ethics, and what have you. Probably we need to learn more than our yeah, kids. We, we, uh, again, uh, there's a book I read. Uh, I forgot the name, and this guy you know, was a, a scholar or something, and he was thinking uh, his son. Uh, going out of line or something like that because he doesn't go prayer or something and something like that. And he was talking to what is a friend and he's saying my 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 you know my my son never comes to the for the prayers. But then he asked what did what your son do? He says that well he works for a lot of charities and he does all this yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. So he uh, he told his friend that is it him you think so <laughs> lost his way or is it you who lost the way? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so because his way yes. of practicing faith yes. or uh, it was different, uh, we all look at the uh, you know, yes. God different yes. way. Yes. So uh, my my kids will look at it differently. I mean, as you said, you know, my kid, my daughter gets mad at me when I say something which comes as stereotype about certain you know certain group of people. Mm -hmm. So she's very sensitive about it. Then, she said yeah. that you know she said why 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 you use this word for this particular group of people is very stereotype. Now as if I'm a teacher and I'm using this word without realizing that I'm doing that and she's correcting me, it means she understands. That, that, that's the point, uh, yeah. Mansoor. Right. I believe that ethically and in many other ways, socially, because certain societies are very advanced, very careful, very sensitive to each other, look at the way the roads are constructed. Yeah. You know, it empowers even the most disadvantaged person yeah. who is on a wheel. A wheeler person can go to any floor of the building, yeah. starting from his or her home. Don't you think this is also a powerful value actually implemented in the society? Yeah. And many of the societies who shout at the top of their voice, our society is have this religion or that religion or this moral value or their moral yeah. You have to find hardly many societies yeah. who have these kinds of social structures mm -hmm. 
which enable even the most disadvantage and underline all all those things is the basic human dignity yes and i think so yes. this society does do that uh, whether it's religiously or we can put it as religious yeah or, or democratically or whatever, or whatever. Or whatever. whatever. So as, as a, forget about the name so this this society you know within this constitution within yes. this bill of rights it talks about the freedom of speech freedom of human being freedom of everything that it talks about the human, yeah, human, yeah, human, human dignity uh, any human is every human is, is, is worthy of dignity. dignity and self respect and same thing we need to apply towards our kids uh, to treat them with dignity to Absolutely. treat them with self respect of course it, we're going to disagree with a lot of yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, you yeah. know they talk about and we talk about because we, we grew up in a different society they grew up in a different society but at the end you need to understand that as long as they understand this idea of self respect dignity of everyone i think so will be fine excellent yeah. mansoor we are uh, almost at the end of our discussion yeah. i'm just wondering what would be the message that you would like to share or give to our audience across the globe about yourself about your family about the kids about the society one sentence that conveys your world view to the societies of today <laughs> yeah one thing uh well one thing i would say uh and I, i that's what i talk to my kids to that i know when you're young and when i was young uh i was always looked at the things where i thought okay if i have this i'm going to be happy so i work i work towards that like i want to have a big house i want to have a car i want to have financial mm-hmm. stability which is good thing you should do you should have ambitions mm-hmm. but what i realized so i was looking everything outside in right i was looking at outside as like if i have this thing i'm going to be inside and happy from inside but as i matured as i grew up my whole perspective of life has changed and now i look at the thing where i want instead of worrying about material stuff i'm more i'm more concerned for myself personal development uh, you know to my enrichment uh, i would experience things and i realize it that you know happiness doesn't come from outside it always comes from within wow it always you know there's a movie called inside out it's a very beautiful movie where it with this idea of that your happiness come from inside once you are happy from inside you will see everything outside you know wow. as as a happy thing so that's my perspective Jane, and that's what i tell my kids yeah of course you want to have everything in your life yes and go for it um, but they realize at the end of the day thing ex happiness always depends within you yeah. and other thing i tell them that you know when we uh, work towards our future uh we forget about present sometimes uh, right and uh, there's a, there's a two two of my favorite movie one of the movie called anand okay and then another movie called three idiots in the anand rajesh khanna character said that you know hum aane wali i mean jo hum jo aane wala gham hota hai future mein yes usko itna kheech taan kar अपनी आज की खुशियों में मिला देते हैं और आज की खुशियों को भी हम जला देते हैं ऐसा समथिंग लाइक दैट एंड वी फॉरगेट यू नो वी डिड दैट और फिर दूसरा वो थ्री इडियट में सॉन्ग था ना कि बहती हवा में था जो उसमें शेर है क्या कहता है कि हमको कल की फिक्र सताती वो आज का जश्न मनाता यू नो वो आज का जश्न मनाता और हर लम्हे को जीता था वो सो आई टेल एवरीवन या यू वर्क फॉर योर फ्यूचर work hard and have commitment yeah. sacrifice but live your present too kya baat hai because yeah. time goes by so fast yes. and by the time you realize uh it's gone life is gone yes. life is over absolutely uh, so always you know enjoy your present i read one book and i'm finishing another book on this very concept of living now yeah uh, an important concept this doesn't mean you don't think about the past mm-hmm. or think about the future yeah. but don't spoil your present yeah. because of these two different times yeah. uh, mansoor you are making an extremely important message and i think lots of people spoil their happiness either thinking about the past mm-hmm. the past failures or even success if they have lost and also many for the future thinking about the future what will happen uh, the kind of thing that will never happen for example maybe yeah. in my own life i have felt that uh, that will never come uh, but worrying about them we spoil yeah 
you are making extremely important point. Uh, I love you sharing the books as well. So go ahead, you want yeah, to Yeah, no, I mean, yesterday we watched the movie, uh, me and uh, Samina, uh, and the movie name was Mimi uh, you know, on Netflix. <laughs> so, you know, the, the two friends are talking and she's going through this, some adversity, you know, what was going on in her life. So her friend said one thing and, and I loved it. I mean, it was a simple dialogue, but it was, it, it just made us sort of fun. Zindagi wo nahi hai jo hum sochte hain. Zindagi wo hai jo hum aisa ho pa hai. Yeah, right? Because we, we fantasize about so many things in our life. Mm-hmm. But as Imam Tatamra says, one fourth of your wish come true, you are the <laughs> happiest person in life. So yeah, yeah three fourth of your wishes will never come true. So, you know, zindagi wo hai jo aapke saath ho pa hai. And you just need to deal with just it. Accept it. Be yeah. positive minded and deal with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. uh, Mansoor Saib. Uh, uh, you know, you are a multidimensional personality. I always get inspiration from your personality. You, on the one hand, are conscious uh, physically. You do exercises. Yeah. You remain physically fit. I love that. Secondly, you read a lot of books. You know, many at times you share some of those books, uh, very enlightening books. Very empowering books, I must say. Mm-hmm. Lots of people read disempowering books yeah. <laughs> because as a result of reading those books, those kinds of literature, they feel disempowered in the society. Uh, the third thing is that as a family person uh, with, uh, mashallah, grown-up uh, kids, yeah, you have tried to balance both the secular and religious on the one hand and the spiritual and intellectual on the other hand. Uh, living in this very society, in the very thick uh, of the things uh, of this society that many people crumble, it is this, it is that. But you taking as uh, this society as a great blessing, you still nurture yourself, your family. Uh, you are a great example uh, for people like me. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Thanks a lot for sparing thank time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. We hope that you would also reflect on your life, uh, keeping these points in view. You do not have to always live the same way. You would have different value system. You would have different ideas, but still there are certain ideas that uh, Mr. Mansoor shared with us that resonate with uh, many, if not most of us. And I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mansur. Thank you.